Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer version 2 to show you the basics of the Shape Builder tool. Think of it as a digital welding tool that allows you to cut parts out of shapes or combine shapes together. For it to work it needs vector shapes. This can be shapes, drawn, curves or lines. In order to show you the functionality of the Shape Builder, I prepared a few shapes with different properties. I have a tree, a cloud, a star, a cactus, a coffee cup and a lotus flower. Let's start with the tree. It's made up of four triangles and a rectangle. Once I select the Shape Builder tool, the context menu changes. I have the actions up there with a plus, a minus, a combine and the methods of selection as well as the preferences for the new shapes to be created. I choose the first mode clicking on the plus that combines the shapes and creates new shapes from whatever I have selected and takes the shapes off the original. This means my five shapes are gone. Instead I have one curve for the tree. I go back to the original, select the shape builder, switch to the minus. This will take parts I select off the original shapes. I select the inner triangles and as you can see they disappear from the shapes. I can now go in, change to the plus and combine the outer elements, again turning the five elements into one curve. When I select the third action it combines the shapes and creates a new curve from them. I select all the shapes of the tree. In the layer panel I now have a new curve on top of the existing five shapes that make up the tree. This will keep your shapes in case you want to work with them for various objects you create from the same base. Or you can not select any action. Select your shapes and then decide what you want to do. If I click on the combine to create a new shape now, it combines all my shapes and puts the new shape on top of my existing elements. When it comes to my selection of shapes, I have three drag methods, the freehand, the line and the marquee. I use the freehand which is just drawing over the shapes. The second one is line. If I switch to that I can draw a straight line to select the elements that the line crosses. And lastly there's the marquee tool which selects the area of the mouse drag. On top of those three options there's always the simple click. If you click on a shape it gets selected. If you click on a selected shape it gets unselected. While talking about the selection I cut the tree. I still have five parts but now there's no overlap between the shapes. It is a great tool to trim parts, to trim overlaps, to cut shapes out of others. Let's move on to the next design. The cloud is made up of a rounded rectangle and a couple of circles. I can select all the shapes but in this case I won't need to. When you're using the shape you just select the shapes you need for your shape. So to create the cloud I just select the rectangle and the two largest circles. Use the shape builder, combine them and have my cloud. Or I select everything and take out the parts I don't need with the minus and then go in with the plus and even though the parts I've already taken out are transparent if I move over the shape I can add them to the selection and create the full cloud again. Choosing the best setting for your actions really depends on your design. Sometimes it makes sense to erase parts first because it gets too complex otherwise. So far I've been working with shapes. The shape builder works great with lines as well. Here I have a star with dividing lines. I select the group, go into the shape builder, turn off the actions so I can select one shape at a time by simply clicking on it. I select every second triangle make a new shape of that and then repeat the process, select every second triangle on the other side. That way I have two parts of my star that I can color differently. You can use lines to create more complex grids. I have another example at the end of the video. 
Seeing the lines divided the star in this example, I can't select them as a shape. Here I have a cactus that consists of circles at the base and lines at the top, which makes it a lot easier to change certain designs if you keep them as lines versus shapes. In order to use this in the shape builder, I need to convert it into curves. I duplicate my base design because I want to keep my editable version. I duplicate the group. I select the lines and expand them. Layers, expand stroke. Now the lines turned into shapes, which means I can use them in the shape builder. I select the green shapes of the top and then select the bottom shapes to have two elements that make the cactus. For the second approach, I want to combine everything. So I'll select my shapes, top and bottom create a new shape from that. Now I have a silhouette of the cactus. I can now go in with the shape builder plus tool and quickly mark the circles and they'll be combined with the silhouette. The next example is this coffee cup made up of circles with strokes but no fills. The main body of the cup is made of two circles. There's a top and a bottom. A simple way to create cylindrical shapes is by using circles. Take one circle, duplicate it, align them vertically and use the boolean add. Delete the center node and then move one part using the node tool. For the shape builder, it makes no difference if the shapes have a fill or not. I can take my outlined coffee cup and take it into the shape builder. In this case, I want to change my view from the normal vector view to the wireframe. Sometimes it makes sense to use the wireframe mode when you have complex shapes, lots of intricate bits that you want to distinguish. Depending on your color choices, it can make the selection and the selected objects more visible. Personally, I prefer to work with no actions on. It might be a little longer, but I keep my base shapes. And if the objects get more complex, it might not work the first time around, or I need to add elements I forgot to select the first time. Keeping that is always playing it safe. The next design is a grid with a teardrop shape on top. The grid is made up of a square with diagonal, horizontal and vertical lines dividing it. On top of that sits a teardrop shape turned into a symbol rotated with pivot points set to the bottom. And the advantage is I can easily change that pattern, change the widths, change the length of the petals. Changing one changes all the other symbols. In order for the shape builder to work, I want the petals to be within the grid. That way the lines are not just partly dividing the teardrop shape. The shape builder works nicely with the symbols. This way I get a lot of shapes out of the simple eight teardrop shapes and a few lines. I'm selecting different paths and making them new shapes to create a more detailed, differently colored design for my lotus flower. Once I created a shape, I go back, select the base grid, use the shape builder and select the next shapes. Once I created all the shapes, I hide the base grid and start coloring the results of the shape building.
using just radial gradients fading from a darker color to a lighter color towards the outside, the teardrop shapes turned into a rather nice flower design. Let's use this grid one more time and create something very different. I select just half of the teardrop shape with the center bit cut out on all four directions. This way I have four shapes making up one curve. I do the same thing again, select the other side, again having four shapes to make up the one curve. You can play around with grids like that in a very creative way, find new shapes for logo designs, for patterns or just for fun. I created a set of 15 grids for you to play with, grab them from my Gumroad page, they are free. Just put a zero in the price and download them, play with them, have fun with them and learn a little bit more about the shape builder in a hands-on approach. I added a gold gradient, an outer shadow and a bevel to the shapes and make them look a little bit more like a logo. Alternatively, I could go in with the shape builder and just select an interwoven pattern just some of the shapes intersecting and give them a flat look or maybe use two colors and some shadow shapes so I create a circle in a darker color set it to multiply give it a blur and place it inside one of the shapes repeat the process to be in all the shapes and then inside to make that part darker I love my gradient so I'll add a radial gradient to the shapes to finish it off, a shine and a outer shadow below. All that happened from a teardrop shape rotated eight ways combined with a grid in the Shape Builder tool. There are endless possibilities of what you can do with the Shape Builder. I'll stop here. I hope this video gave you an idea of how the Shape Builder works. Just remember it works with vector shapes, not bitmaps, pixel layers or embedded objects. Lines are used to divide if you want the shape of a stroke expanded first. If you enjoy playing with geometric patterns, I suggest trying the grids on my Gumroad page. I also created a set of puzzle grids. These are all about having fun and understanding the shape builder a little bit better. It is a great tool. I was very skeptical in the beginning why, where and for what I could use it. But there are a lot of little things where it is really fun and a speedy alternative to create the results I want. So play around with it, learn it. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you learn, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification button, leave a like and I will see you again soon.